Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today's going to be kind of a quick one, but I thought it's been a little bit since I did a video, so I should pop out a new one. I was um, actually working on updating my uh, guide to post-processing the other day, and as I was going through it, I was working on the raw chapter, and I got to the part about adjustment brushes, and it made me think, wow, I really never use these. Maybe I should, It was kind of what I was thinking. Um, and I started playing around with them some more and realizing how kind of useful they can be, even though they've kind of fallen out of my kind of normal workflow. Um, I think I should pay more attention to them on certain images. And so I thought I would do a quick video just to talk about that. I've got an image here I shot a couple weeks back of a bald eagle flying around, chasing, he's actually chasing a little duck, um, trying to dive bomb him. Um, and I've already gone through here and made my normal raw conversions. I went through this and I just, you know, I added some exposure and toned down the highlights and added some clarity and did some saturation and I tweaked the white balance. Usual stuff. That's where I would normally just save this file and then I would move into Photoshop. But on an image like this, where we've obviously got this bright white tail and bright white head, um, for sure we can target those in Photoshop later. But part of the whole point of shooting raw is to get to, first of all, capture the highest quality image in the field. So we want to have all that detail to work with. And it's a good practice to always try to maintain the highest quality file. So before exporting this into a TIFF, it would make sense to make as many changes to the raw file as we could so we have the highest quality file type to work with once we get into Photoshop. So let's just take a, a look at this file as a quick example of how you could do a few things with the adjustment brushes. So first thing, of course, is to come over here at the top to the adjustment brush and select it. And I think what we can do in this first one is just to drop an adjustment brush in here on his, on his tail. And a few little settings we might want to deal with. So auto mask, I think, is very useful because it's going to find the edges of things. And we could turn the mask on to being red. And now if I just sort of paint around his tail a little bit here, we can see that that's going to just deal with his tail, but it's not getting any of the background or the brown feathers. And I could also just paint his head in since it's also white. So now we know where we've painted. So that's our first, our first little pin there is dealing with his tail and his head. So now it's as simple as just dialing in whatever correction we would want to do. So what if I just knock the highlights down another 20 points and maybe the whites down a bit? Now obviously it's really hard for me to tell what's going on there. So if I take the mask off, now we can really see. I can see more detail in there. I guess I should have taken the mask off before I made those changes. Let me put those back to zero. And then now we can kind of see if I start knocking the highlights back there and the whites. So we see we're just getting a little more detail in those feathers. So that's great. Now if we wanted to, uh, let's say, what else could we do with this? We could add some, because this was kind of a decent sized crop of this image, um, we may want to add some, we could add some detail and some, a bit of contrast into kind of this main area of focus. So if I did a new brush and I put it maybe there, um, let's see, maybe something like that, and we're going to mask, and I'm going to paint kind of all over his wing sort of mantle area here, something like that. And this one, I don't want it to be these highlight changes, I want to get rid of those. And I think in this case, what I'm looking to have happen, let's turn the masking off. Um, I was thinking I would add a bit of texture and maybe a little bit of saturation. We could also go into um, the sharpness here and bump that up a little bit. And let's zoom in a bit, maybe let's see what our mask is doing here. So what happens if we bump the texture way up? So that's too much for sure. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. 
if you can see what would happen here if I just really cranked up the exposure, you can see the area that we're targeting, right? So it's his mantle, his head, and it's just, a, it's just another way of making a selective edit, but that we maintain the highest quality file type before we go into our, our normal processing. So if I went back out here now, then we'd be able to see our kind of before and after. Not hugely dramatic, that's our before and that's our after. So we see a bit more contrast in the kind of mantle, a little bit sharper, more detail around the eye, and yet we've preserved um, the highlight details in the tail and the head. So just another little trick, another quick tip that you can incorporate into your workflow. I don't think it's necessary on every image, but when you get to the end of your normal kind of adjustments here, your normal raw, and if you find yourself, for example, not wanting to bump up the exposure more because you're losing highlight detail, it just gives you that other option so that you could make, the, for example, the overall image brighter, but then just quickly add an adjustment brush and knock down the highlights in a certain area before moving on to your Photoshop workflow. So there's many ways to get there, but this will preserve the highest quality file type. And um, yeah, hopefully you found this little tip useful, or maybe it's just a reminder. It was, it was a reminder to me because I kind of forgot about adjustment brushes and I had been just doing my selective edits in Photoshop and, and that, that works too. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. Thanks for watching, guys. See you again soon.